Hi, this is Janos it's Real World Audio. I received questions how to take uh, Lagrand from the baby version to the full version and this video is about it. So, uh, basically, number one thing that you need to do is round down the corners so these edges are not straight but round them down, keep them nice and round everywhere so it's not, not a sharp corner not, not a sharp corner here, everything is rounded down nicely here, there, there, everywhere, in all dimensions, everywhere most critical are the front surface and, and that's because you heard about the evil goblin called diffraction and this is what limits diffraction so when you don't have those hard edges which cause the worst diffraction offenses. So, and I would say this is true for every single loudspeaker. If you find a hard edge, a hard corner, round it down. It doesn't really matter how much you round it, how precisely, whatever, just don't keep it a hard straight edge. Just round it down. You can file it down, if you don't have any good means, even if you just cut it straight so it becomes like a tuk angle, tuk, even that's better than just leaving a straight corner. So fundamental number one thing to do is to get rid of the hard edges so that you won't have the goblin of diffraction. Number two is going on about that. So now let's look underneath and get some light here. Okay maybe too much light, right? So here same thing for the port, round down the opening and, and here round down as well so that where the air exits it's not a straight edge like, 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 a, uh, like a wind instrument uh, um, piece but it's more and more like, like, like a horn opening and this is not a true horn loading because uh, normally for horn loading uh, we call it horn loading where it loads at the frequency where it produces sound. Here the, the, the frequency where it's loading this little horn is way 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 higher. It's in the several kilohertz region where it loads this little horn and of course the base, the output here, the port is going to be below 100 hertz. So so basically the horn loading does not affect the signal that's coming out from here however it greatly impacts on the impedance conversion between the air in your room and the air in the loudspeaker because there is like a major differential in, in, the, in the pressure of that sound wave that when it's in your room and when it's inside the cabinet and when it's going through the ports it gets squeezed down to, to really really high pressure zone and if it happens gradually it will make for a very noticeable difference and, and now it, it won't be a night and day difference it will be very minor I would say but uh, once you start hearing the, the defects caused by a narrow straight port without this horn loading then you will notice this thing moving on from that and then it won't be acceptable for you anymore and just saying that this is one of the big trends that's happening to loudspeaker manufacturers in the past few years is that more and more are catching up with flaring their ports both usually it's, it's the circular ports they are doing the flares but they're doing the same thing that I'm doing here so that's number two and uh, number three thing is uh, what I have done to mine is that you see my driver is not on the outside but it, it's on the inside and if you want to do that then round down the edge here if, if you put it inside and keep this straight it will be bad, really bad that will never give a, a, a good response, it will act as a, as, a, as a conical horn loading for a really narrow frequency bandwidth and it will be actually it will give a very strong character to the sound but uh, and you might even like it 
but it will really narrow down uh, how it fills the room. It will really collapse the sound in one way and in the other way you make it sound like a, a limited horn speaker. If you round down the edges then that's, that's how I, I recommend to, to build it, to do it. And, uh, and also what I really recommend is that you try it out once you... you f and, and how to try it out is that when you build your speakers, so first build them without rounding down the corner and just put the speaker inside and, and listen to how it sounds. And then take off the front faceplate, reverse it and put the driver on the outside and listen to it. Why? Because right now I c could not take out the driver because, you see, because of this curve you cannot mount it from the outside. And it's going to cause a, a whistle-like effect if, if I would mount this driver in the front and the basket would just sit here and there is this, this curve behind it. No. When the driver is on the front, then you have to take this curve to the other way. So that's why like flipping the front would take care of that. And then listen to both and just do not A-B test it. Because when you A-B test it, it will just show which compensates better for that specific song you are listening to. Listen for a week in both orientations for a number of different songs, very different songs, different volumes, different times of the days, different moods, and then figure out which is the one you like better on the long term and keep at it. And, and mind that in the beginning, while it's breaking in, the one that you will do for the second option will be always much, much better due to the driver break-in. And then after that, I would say, flip it back to the other orientation and then give more food for thought on what you like better. This is not really a race course. You won't really get uh, far if you want like, really fast results. If you want to just skip the train, skip the line, of getting experience and just think like do something without experience then you are missing the whole thing. What you are gaining here is yeah, you are building up experience and by building the speakers you are figuring out as much as what you want to hear as, as, as how the speakers will turn out. Because uh, no two person wants to hear the sound the same way and um, and, and it is up to you to figure out what you really want from the sound. And uh, next one, next consideration. So what you see here is that, uh, what you don't see actually is that on the inside here, we have the slot port that, that is right going down. So it means that on the inside, there is this panel here that, that runs up. And there's a panel on the other side for the other port right there. And in the basic version, you just have the panel and the bottom, and it's just square. And now, fill up that square here. So just put something there, that it's not just a straight corner, but there's a little spacer, that a little wedge that goes from front to back, and fills up that corner, so it's not a 90 degree corner anymore, but a nice rounded shape. You can even put a wedge there, so it's like a straight line. Just get rid of that corner. Uh, and then, upstairs, here. You could put a wedge there as well, but I recommend against it. Why? And the reason why is because here in the bottom, we already have the, uh, the slot port there, so that's already altering a lot the resonant properties of the panel, and, and really uh, controlling and culling the resonance of the lower part of the panel. So if we add that little extra there, it's not going to change much of that anyway. However, the top is extremely free to resonate, extremely resonant, and if I were to add a, a piece there, that would significantly probably uh, impact the sound and uh, uh, in, a, in a way that would just decrease the perceived dynamics of the loudspeaker. And maybe that's what you want. If, if that's your flavor of the month, 
then go for it. And uh, what I have noticed, what I received as feedback from uh, several of you who have built uh, Lagron, that when you build it with not with these live, not in a live cabinet, but uh, so here we have like thin plywood, high quality plywood back and front, and this around that's pine, that's pine wood, the girdle basically, the side, the top and the bottom is pine and the rest is plywood instead and all of them are really thin uh, however what you can do is uh, that's an, uh, an alternative like a very different take on Lagrand and make it instead of this thin uh, live material make it with hardwood and heavy wood like a one inch thick oak and just make one inch thick oak everything that is also uh, and and maybe apply a little bit of dampening material into the corners that will create a very different sound and i would say that uh, most of you have an equipment that will prefer mating that kind of sound that kind of uh, loudspeaker synergy and, and that's the feedback I'm getting, that when trying out those hardwood heavy loudspeaker cabinets, that that's an overwhelmingly positive uh, impression, that that's really, really good, and people like it. And, uh, and I can second that, but why I recommended this active cabinet is because I'm also recommending basically a systems building approach. So this is what my channel is about how can you develop a stereo system like the one I have and why I'm saying that because that's where I have the most experience no one on planet earth knows how to put together my exact system better than I do and uh, and while I have no illusions that there are other systems which are truly excellent on this planet there are probably thousands of audiophiles who have wonderful sounding systems but uh, I had friends visiting my system and, and all of, uh, well, not all of them, but many of them recommended that Janos, you need to share this with the world, how to do it. Because even regarding exceptional systems, what you have is exception within the exceptions. So, uh, so that's what, what I've been trying to do for three years, is just sharing how I got there, how to do it, and I cannot give to all of you a step-by-step -step instruction because not a single one of you can follow it because you don't have the same, uh, uh, same material to work with, the same parts. And if you change one or two things, then you have to change many more. And that's why what you need to do is to build up the knowledge on how to do these speakers. And that's why I made so many videos on, on Lagron so that you understand what these speakers are about, how to make them, how to match them, and then you can also add your uh, personality to it, to its development. So I think these, these couple ones are the most important bits. Uh, so compared to basic Lagrand, take care of the flaring, take care of this, try out whether you like the drivers inside first or outside but make sure that the edge here is rounded and it doesn't doesn't ju don't just cut a straight hole and put the driver inside it will be terrible uh, and and the last one is that here on the inside you don't see it because it's on the inside of the sidewall that I have carved out the wood on the sides both sides and the top as well so while on the bottom I have that extra piece here that, that, that basically curves out the, the bottom part of the cabinet so it's not a straight, straight edge anymore. So instead of putting dampening there, I put that curve in there so that there are no diffractions inside the cabinet, hard diffractions at high frequencies, eating up the energy from the low frequency resonances. On the, on the top side, what I did is curving, carving out the top, carving out the side. Uh, the, I, I just uh, made it possible so that it's, it's not, not a straight air column, but it bulges out, bulges out on the top. 
so that the corner is not such a big distraction anymore because it's not loading uh, a, a square, a cube, but uh, more like a little bit of a, of a rounding uh, inside. And how significant is that carving on the inside? It's quite significant. So on the inside, compared to the width, it adds half a note lower frequency support and also for the height it also adds half a note lower support. If you don't know what I'm talking about you really need to get working on the Lagrange series because that's something fundamental about these speakers why I did them and not just these speakers all of the speakers I build is that I tune them and uh, tuning them makes a big difference. How big would you ask? Well, if you don't listen to tone and tonality and you listen only to percussive music, it won't bother you at all. You won't miss anything at all. However, if you listen to tonality, like you listen to uh, chamber music or, or, or any kind of classical music or instruments with wood in them, it might make all the difference for you and then just uh, as a reminder what I'm showing with to you what I'm sharing with you this this uh, cabinet building philosophy has nothing to do with uh, commercial systems I left that road I don't really care for it and it's something really really different and 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 the way how I build them the way that it's a resonant cabinet is, uh, is something truly different from the mainstream and it's not going to work well with mainstream amplifiers, mainstream uh, sources. Uh, to get the most out of them and to realize their full potential, you really have to implement uh, also your amplification and, and your sources. You have to make them uh, be able to get rid of the, the hardness in the sound, the mechanical component. And once you got rid of the mechanical component, that's when the full Lagrange potential will awaken. If you do not have that mechanical component fully out of the way, you will most likely much prefer the basic Lagrange compared to the full Lagrange. And that's why I felt not that bad of delaying with the plans for the uh, full version because before you get there you really have an extremely long path to go on fixing the rest of the system. And my last addition is, is really really just get over the fact of not gluing it together use brass screws to hold on at least the faceplate if you absolutely must glue everything else but have the face plate uh, screwed on or maybe the rear plate it's it's your choice really uh, why is that because then you will be able to do modifications on it and change it to your flavor what you want to hear what you want to do with it and that's because there is no such thing that you you just get a loudspeaker and it's perfect for you it will be probably if you are lucky 90 percent good for you and that 10 percent will make all the difference uh, that later on you do to it and and just fine-tune it to your taste to your system to your room and if you glued everything together then if you want to change anything you have to build a brand new cabinet and if you just screw them it means that with a 5% more effort you are done with your mods, with your changes instead of putting in an extra 100% of effort. And when you do that just make sure to use brass screws. Do not use other metals. Do not use steel, stainless steel. It will be God awful and God save you from doing that. And then if you do that then you deserve all the bad reputation that uh, the speakers get the, which have screws yes because they have metal the iron screws or stainless steel screws iron screws are the worst offenders and that's when you're going to get problems that you are go going to blame all of them on the driver and 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 no they are to be blamed on the iron screws change it to brass all that goes away and you'll get 
a nice flat response in the high end. There is no 8 10 kilohertz resonance anymore. With the iron screws or steel screws, stainless steel, you will have extremely sharp, very high dB resonant, high resonant peak with the sound. So that's it. I, I really hope uh, this was uh, useful to all of those, all of you who, who are building it and, uh, and have fun with it. And uh, yep, have an amazing day. Bye bye.